But before we do that, allow me share with you the words of Dr. Ben Carson. Dr. Ben Carson, Yawandi Kalumu, Muchitabo Cheche, a big picture. Nagambanti, a privileged person, is one who has been accorded the platform and the opportunity to affect the lives of others positively. No, Rachel, this evening I count myself very privileged if through what we are going to share, I can help you to get to know certain things about yourself and to also understand that you can do better. The people may look down upon you. They may uh, undermine your potential. But once you understand that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, I'm created by, by God, I'm a masterpiece, irrespective of what people may say. Umayu wali olmu, wetu wetu nulida netuwe nyoma. Sima njiba meka kumwe, haba nyumiru wa nyoko wetu nulida munda abidu wamu. Eh, lamu la wanise. <laughs> Chetufu. Wali haba antu ngaba nyumiru wa mbuli wetu nulida munda abidu wamu, asa nyukachalaba. Ne wabida wabalinga, watu nulida munda abidu wamu ila tunayatia. Olwe chifana, nyolwe mfana na ye. Ainzo kubango omutue munene. Ama asoma nene. Wachuka keno, nala banga enali fulati. Baola ini. Nenga, mbwati okatonda wea mutonda. Sibwe chidi. Chengeza kogamba. Nti, whether you are big or small, brown, dark skinned or what, you are the image of God. You are created after his likeness. While God was speaking all other things into being, wea tuka kukwe nangi. He got busy and made us after our own image. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 26, right from the onset, God says these words. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Katonda yogira ebigambo bino, ngabiku wata kugwe nangi, osobolo kutegeda nti olichitonde cha njaulo, ebidalabio na ya yogira wogezi nebibao, newe ya tuka kugwe nangi, na gamba, then God said, let us make man in our own image. In our own likeness. Hmm. Echote chikuwe unisa. Chitegeza wentunulida. Chenda ba mundabi duamu. Wembasi chagala. Ino kujukidambu chino chitonde chani. Chaka tonda. Wali haba mkufi. Haba gala. Wetutu ukechi serechu. He. Eh? Mkade wangu zechi. Intunulida haba, haba high school. Neka ancho ogede. Baja kutegeda context. Wemutu ukechi sera chiri. Ngaba nafeba na bali mu university. Namuta and it's a time you are searching, looking for a stable marriage partner. Wali abamu abagala abantu abatini tini. Ba potebo. Ni wabeda wabali abagala ba heavy duty. Nti watambla nga uli la kozechi. Agumite. Ni wabeda wabali nga bo. Nga kasaizi keko mpewe sobula na mufu uwa. Ni yenga oyogo ya gade. Sibwe chidi. Na ye chengeza kogamba tipuonda bitonde biachi. Biaka tuonda. Banafe, banafe bali mu high school, we muda yo bambi. Ebigambo bino mubitegele bulonji. Mubagambe, abali mu high school. Tiyo musumba ya gambi. Ndiwe ya tuka ku Adam, nasoka na amteka mu. Kweba, otulo tunji. Kuluachi, kubanga echitonde cheyali agendo kuleta chali chanja ulo. Ama sanyalaze gali kagenda kubeda u. Na uwe ngo, walio watu ulano umu, tungo ulida nga masanyalaze kaku isemu. Nolecho wabeda ngo chali mu high school. Waino kusoko kubeda mutulo. Kubanga wota andike bintu bino. Ama sanyalaze kajia kuita munga kube. Ogweri. So first put yourself into deep sleep. Oso mechi. Ebitabo. Neba na fawali wano. Neka sili na shuwa bulunja. Aba muku mwe mumbu zaabu. Zewe muamba la leya. Mwinzo kubanga mucha alimu high school. Bamekaba tuuse okunoni. Ok. Echibuzu. Kanchi kanchi chuse. <laughs> Can't you choose them? <laughs> but make a very past high school. Past high school. Okay, move it up. Okay, I'm safe now. I'm safe. What do you want to do? Okay. 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 Wali haba antu ngabo, ngabo ba, ba uli danti ya mitima jaka luba. Antipo, ne walabu wa muntu, ta, taina chimutu kako. Before I leave, tuino kusabida. Esale ye nja ulo. Kumanga sibu watu katonda wa tutuonda. Katonda ya tutuonda mungeri ye nja ulo. Nti walaba omu wala. Walaba omu lens. Wali wainu kubaweche nja ulo. Sibu ya chidi. 
Nti omusajja abadde akuba bass guitar. Oyina okutunula no gamba, mm, na yo no musajja. Wanja ulo ona akuba piano. <laughs> Tuino kumujukiza anti akuze, yebuza abuza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awa 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 bingo mabavu de o mbadde njagala kuyimba ya kayimba. Wewe muli. Ndagala kuyimba ya kayimba. Lamlo oyina microphone. Ebisaida bili na linalinga muyimbi mulunji neka kati edobozi lyage nda. Tukenda kuyimba see what the Lord has done. Mukamanyi. Mukamanyi. Uh -huh. See what the Lord has done, what we have been waiting for has come to pass. Then we pray, we share something from the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to your presence this evening, thanking you, Lord, for the gift of life. We want to thank you that we are before your presence. Just like we have sung this song, see what the Lord has done. Our friends have written various prayer requests. We are going to have a special prayer session for all those issues. But Lord, we long for that one day. That one day when we look back with confidence and we say, see what the Lord has done for us. All the things that we have been waiting for have come to pass. These young people have come to seek your face. Some are still in school. They have been pleading. They want financial breakthrough. They want tuition. They want school fees. They want knowledge. You tell us in the book of James, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask from you who gives generously to all. Lord, we want to plead that may you touch our brain cells in a special way. In case there is anyone who came with a longing in their heart, with an emptiness, maybe they feel hopeless. Lord, may you speak words of hope to them this evening. In case there is anyone who has lost sense of direction through the sharing this evening, Lord, may they see your presence. May they make a right decision. We have been accumulating many wrong things. This evening, help us to understand why we need to accumulate the right things. This is a humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. In the few minutes we are sharing, our subject of discussion has a title. What are you accumulating? What are you accumulating? Ask your neighbor, 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 oh neighbor, what are you accumulating? What are you accumulating? Yes, to accumulate means to gather bit by bit. Ncho inechi ntucho bade na cho, newe sanga ngache yonge deko. Rudi walimu friend class, walimu bize bi, baba igiriza yolu nyiriri rumu. Nemu jawa no maso kafe, nemu reciting yolu nyiriri. John 11 verse 35, Jesus wept. Katimu chisera chino tukusubi nanti, woyina enyirize we yonge deko. 
Olimu S1, olimu S2, otuse mu university. What are you accumulating? Njagala mtegedebi gambo binobulunji. To accumulate nga wengambie. It is bit by bit, little by little. We accumulate knowledge. We accumulate experience. We accumulate wealth. We accumulate friends. Last Sabbath, Muzda was celebrating 50 years of existence. And to many of you who are following this program, we invited many people. It is when I realized that I had accumulated many friends. Because we were going to be what are you accumulating? I want you to realize that me, this means to gradually acquire something bit by bit, not suddenly. Wetu beda musomero. Oluso uoso kera dalogenda mchibina, wali yo ebibuzo, wali yo biyoso manga, tobi tegeda. Nga we sanze nga omusome satan soko geda, nga oli da dato connecting. If you are reading, maybe the first time you are reading something, you may not understand. And somehow, you may find that you have to go back to revise, to understand certain concepts very well. This reminds me of the time when I was in high school, like our friends here. And they had set a paper of chemistry. And uh, they, when we were going to do the paper the following day, my friends came at night and they told me, Perez, we didn't revise well, but we want you to help us. What you're going to help us is you're going to just be coughing. You remember that chemistry paper one, 50 objectives. Your work will just be to cough. If the answer is A, you cough once. <coughs> and I told them, but I'm a Christian. I can't do that. They said, no, nobody will know. So the time reached, we went into the examination room and the teacher gave out the papers before you would even say start, I coughed. <coughs> and they were confused. <laughs> I shook my head and I said, no. Question number one. The answer was B, so I had to cough two times. <coughs> they suckered. It was okay. Problem came on question number two. The answer was D, and I had to cough four times. So I coughed. <coughs> <coughs> and they all suckered. Those who knew that it had to be D. But because the night before I had got a sore throat, I ended up coughing the fifth time. <coughs> That is where trouble came. So when they brought back the papers, the teacher had arranged them in ascending order. So he would read out names. Francis Damulida, 10%. Colin, 15%. Omar Apo, 30%. And he gave out all the papers. And each time he would give up a, a paper, everybody would know, I think now I perform better than that person. Because he would read the name and the marks. So he gave out all the papers till he reached mine and said, Perez, 85%, and I was very happy. My neighbor, who I had helped in the examination, had not received this paper. So he, he knocks me on my knee and says, Nkuangude, I felt bad because I had helped him in the examination. They give out all the papers except one. And the teacher says, there is a donkey. That forgot to write its name. Can you put up your hand? And the donkey put up the hand. I said, can you stand up? The donkey stood up. And the teacher went on to say, now this donkey did not only forget to write its name, but on question number two, I gave you only four objectives, A, B, C, and D. Instead of choosing any of those, this donkey had a known E that none of the above. <laughs> of course, they beat the donkey. What am I trying to say? To some of us who are in school like ourselves, by the time you do an examination, there's something you've been accumulating. The first day you go to class, you may not understand. The concepts may be hard, but along the way when you keep on studying, you are able to understand them better. Those who are in university, when you are graduating, it is accumulation. That's why we call it cumulative grade point average cgpa it is accumulation but here you are the semester has begun 
we are already past the middle of the semester. Some of you have never attended certain lectures, have never done any assignments, and you are accumulating. When the examination period reaches, my friends here will bear me witness because I've worked in a school, in primary school, seven years, high school, seven years. Right now, when the term is not yet towards the end, you are very healthy towards examination. I don't know what happens. People fall sick. During our times, they used to people who, who, we used to see people who had shake, shake. You know shake, shake? Hey, you saw you have ever fallen sick of it. And you wonder what is wrong. And people have kind, all kinds of excuses. They tell you, I have headache, I have stomach ache, I have fever. Why? They have accumulated a lot of backlog. They haven't been doing assignments. They haven't been doing their part. During our time, there is a series we enjoyed so much, 24. Now, you'll forgive me, I may say certain things which make me seem very old. Anyone who watched 24? Oh, so you're my age mates. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we used to watch that series, 24, and sometimes you'd, have, you'd want to continue with the series. Do you know what would happen? You remember when it's already 5 or 6 a.m. You've watched the entire night. You've accumulated sleep deficit. You end up getting stressed. In the Bible, a very commun uh, familiar passage in First Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. There is a young man like us today who are listening to me. A young man who challenges people with what he had accumulated. This young man is David. And let me just paint for you a picture, then I read a few verses for you to understand. This young man goes to war and realizes that the children of Israel are challenged by a man known as who? Goliath. And here is David. He comes before Saul. He talks to his brothers. He gets to know that there is somebody who is standing. And here he is face to face with Saul and he's telling him that he's going to face Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 33 says, Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been a fighting man from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, I struck it, and rescued the sheep from, the, the, from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine would be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. I want to pause there and po ask you a question. If such a child, if such a youth came before you, and told you such a story, what would you think? Immediately you'd think maybe he's crazy. He's in, he's, he's, in, he's in his right state of mind. If somebody has never preached during a midweek fellowship, and he says, when the bishop is coming, Elder Damulida, I want to be the one to preach. What would you think? Huh? S1? You're the one who wants to preach. We are quick to put people in a certain class. But David sticks to his point. He tells Saul, the man you see here, I have accumulated victories. Victories over lions. Victories over bears. Victories over small things. What are you accumulating? You can't achieve great things if you can't achieve victories over small things. Small things like temptations that come your way. There's a place I went and the people told me that virginity is not dignity but the absence of opportunity. I don't know if you got that, but I won't repeat it. But there are places or there are people who think that for you to be valued as somebody of, of importance, you should have many people around you. It is just... We are just past the middle of the semester. Some of you have had like four girlfriends or like five girlfriends. What are you accumulating? Are you accumulating grades or a degree in post prostitution? What are you accumulating? It is very possible. 
What kind of reputation do you want at the end of the course of your study? Because we are in public campuses where there is no one following you up. These people may have restrictions, but when you go to university, sometimes they make fun and they say that, ah, you're going to sleep on a tree today. Because you know what happens if somebody brings, somebody imports, he brings his takeaway. You have to vacate to give them space. I have a brother, very cunning brother, he's called Godfrey. One time, when we were still young, around 10, 11, we went to Nakawa Market. And in Nakawa Market, there were these ladies from West Nile who used to sell granites, hard corn, sim sim. And so my brother convinces me and says, I'm going to go and perform a miracle. You don't say anything. Just follow me. So we go to the first lady. She was selling peanuts, and he says, Jaribu. So he eats and says, give also my brother. He, he, we eat. Then he says, mm, basing on how you have fried these peanuts, you didn't fry them well. If you had put salt, we would have bought. We go to the next lady. She was selling hard corn. So he says, Jaribu. He eats. Then he also says, give my brother Jaribu also. So after eating, my brother tells the woman that, I wish you had mixed the hard corn with peanuts we would have bought. We go to the third lady. She was selling Sim Sim. He had an excuse for each and every person we went to. And we ended up eating peanuts, hard corn, Sim Sim, soya from five women when we hadn't paid any money. Then he asked me, haven't I performed a miracle? And I tell him, no. I said, but I have, you've eaten things for free. I said, okay, yes, you've done a miracle. Now, don't you think I'm God? I said, you can't be God. Some of us, some of us are like those peanuts had gone. We have ended up giving Jaribu left, right, center. We have lost value. We have lost importance. What are you accumulating? What are you accumulating? It is very possible for you to lose a name, a good name. The Bible says a good name is to be treasured. But if you don't have the word no in your vocabulary, whoever comes, yes. And you reach a point, and, but was, what was I thinking? You know, the hardest people to give advice are people who are in love. I ever try to give advice. People who are in love, people who have power, people who have money. People in love, you advise them, you talk to them, you tell them, the person you are with, we know his reputation. We know he's just playing around with you. By January, mark my words, we are in April. But by January, the boyfriend or girlfriend you have right now, who you think means the world to you, you may not have him. I know these words, you don't want to hear them. They sound bitter. But try to advise somebody who is in love. Right now, they may seem like they are hearing Everything the pastor is speaking, in the evening, late in the evening, 10 p.m., the status will be, no monkey can come in between our relationship. They don't fear even the man of God. What are you accumulating? David speaks with confidence before King Saul, and he says, whom the person you see here has accumulated victories, victories in small things, victories where there is nobody to see you, in your public campuses, where there is no father, there is no elder, there is no one to follow you up, whether you have gone to class, whether you have stayed in the hostels, nobody is there. What are you accumulating? Very soon you'll be out of those universities. You need a job. Some of us have got jobs without applying at all. We just went and somebody had written on a, a, a yellow card those notes and says, give this person a job. Why? We have accumulated friends. We have accumulated experience along the way. And people see your potential. I want to tell you with confidence, if you're good enough, nobody can ignore you. If you sing well, you may be in Entebbe, but they look for you. Because you sing well. I expected an amen. You mean we had no choirs in Makerere here to bring you? Because you sing well. If you are good, you can't be ignored. The people will look for you. What are you accumulating? While you're in school, do your part. You may not understand everything right now. But the little steps you make, you look back with confidence and you say, I did my part. We read that text, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. The wise man says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Why? 
Because in the world of the dead, where we are all going, they won't be working. You won't have chance to read. If you're singing, do your very best. Do your very best. Some of us are ever on social media. And you have an opportunity because you have a following. There are some of you who have a large following, more than even your church here. More than your church. But you've never posted any verse, nothing about where you worship from. You know, I was challenged. I know many of you are an ex. I was challenged by that girl who is contesting for Miss World, World, World Life. And people who are not in the church are sharing. You saw Kanare Mugubi sharing that vote for her. Winnie kids are sharing vote for her. And here you are, a church member. But because inside of you, you feel like, ah, why do I vote for her? Do I know her? But she's carrying the Adventist flag. Why? She's dressed in an adventure and a Pathfinder uniform. That is your opportunity for you to like, to repost, to do whatever it takes for somebody to see your good works. I want to challenge you young people. God has given us a lot of potential to use it. One person said, if you don't talk about what you're doing, nobody will know that you're doing anything good. We have a lot of potential here. Untapped potential. What are you accumulating? Because at the end of it all, at the end of it all, we'll look back and say, how did we use our youth? Do you know why some people don't want to leave power? Because they didn't use their time well. You've been in the youth department. You've grown past that level, but you're still also counting yourself a youth. Please, you've grown. Leave. Leave it for young people. They can't run at the same speed like you. We are holding on to things. What are you accumulating? In the book of Matthew chapter 25, as I try to wind up because of time. Matthew chapter 25, Jesus paints for us a picture of these young people. Young people like us. And it, it talks about the parable of the talents. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. It says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey. Who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five, tal five talents of money. To another he gave one talent. And to another, another he gave two, another he gave one. Each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one who had gained two, gained two more. But the one who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Who was the faithful uh, uh, servant? The one who had five, the one who had two, or the one who had one? If you analyze this, on first value, you'd think that the one oye yafune emu, ndoze yali mwesigwa, kubanga mkama wewe ya komao, eyo talante emu ya njini jiaina jiamudiza, oye te yali mwesigwa, ya jikuma bulonji. Na yeba na wafu na tano bidi buli omu ya kolachi, ya zimbulu kusamu, they multiplied. Because they knew that if God has given us, if God has blessed us as young people, we need to use our potential well. We need to use our talents well. Don't wait until you're tired when you're old. Don't wait until you've gained everything. There are people who say that me, I'll serve my God when I'm old enough. This is a lesson for us to start young as we are. That's why the Bible says, remember your creator while you're still young. Before those days when you'll be regretting. This man, you'd have thought, the one who had five, it was a risk. What if he invested the five and the old money was taken? What would he explain to his boss? Many of us young people, we have been led astray to want get rich quick schemes. Some of us, we may be here listening to me, even online, and we are involved in betting, sports betting. If it was possible, would even get a cane and whip you. How can you be in the church? Sports betting, an SDA. Betting, why do you want to get money? And you're here in the afternoon program when you have earphones listening. When the team scores, you jump, jump, and remember you're in church. Many of us, have been involved in those other schemes which you know 
get rich quick schemes. They tell you now, come and invest this money. When we multiply it after one month, one week, you get this money. I was also falling a victim one time. Ever heard of capital chicken? Eh? I like taking care of animals. And my wife used to complain about hens. And she said, these hens of yours make a lot of noise. Now this person comes up with an idea and says, just bring your money. We'll take care, for, we'll take care of the hens and we'll give you back the profit. Good deal. And you imagine that since I'm working, this will do well. Friends, I got my five million hard-earned money. And I was going to take it to invest it. Invest it. But one pastor... One pastor had said, be careful and always listen to the voice of your wife or women. Why? Women were the first ones to hear the voice of Satan. I know you missed that. In the Garden of Eden, when the snake came and they wanted to tempt man, who did they first speak to? The woman. That means she knows the voice of... You say it. Now you're feared. She knows the voice of Satan. So you have to listen to your wives. Now many of you may be single, but you have to listen when the time is right. So my wife warned me and said, please, please don't take the money. And I am glad I learned. Because after withdrawing the money, I took it back and rebanked it. Shortly, shortly, I think after two weeks, I see the news. This company had closed. Mama, what would we do? The pastor's money, little as it is, Pastor Nsuvuga, imagine five million of a pastor. Hey! Dear young people, what are you accumulating? We don't want to work. We don't want to read. We don't want to do our level best. Many of us are so lazy. Many of us, I asked around how many are married, but many of us are so stingy. Very stingy. When the time is right and you also sit this way, some of these people you see, they want good things, but they are not willing to invest. They look at the ladies, they are looking beautiful. They don't know that somebody has put in money, money for hair, money for the dress, money to make sure that she's smelling good like a flower. And here you are, you're just admiring, admiring. Please invest. We are tired of Stingy Men Association of Makerere. Please invest. You want good things. Those good things won't come out of the blue. You have to work hard. When you work hard, you know, even if for men, for men, some of you are very handsome, but for a man, what shows that is handsome is the wallet, not the appearance. However ugly you may be, if the wallet is happy, it will compensate for the looks. Even if the, the mouth has a bad smell, the wife will come up with an idea. At least let's get something to make sure that the, smell, the mouth smells good. If he has a lot of pimples, we'll go to a dermatologist and somehow the pimples will clear. But if you are here, you think that because of your beauty, your muscles, you'll attract the good girls. They'll take them. You'll keep admiring. The next thing you know, you'll be added to a WhatsApp group organizing the wedding. What are you accumulating? What are you accumulating? While in school, do your best. They are those things which seem to be hard. Those subjects which people say are so hard to accomplish. Accumulate. Consult the teachers. You who are in university, accumulate the right type of friends. You never know when the time will come. When you need somebody to mention your name in a door full of opportunities. I want to end because of time. But I want to challenge you young people. We have abilities to do great things. We shouldn't undermine ourselves. Whatever you see out there. Whatever you see out there. People of Makerere here church. I want to see one day a safe border. Safe border on Twitter saying that because of weather. Do you want a border border to Makere SDA church? Lamla, have you ever seen those things? You know, I see them and I'm challenged. I'm like, can't this happen in the SDA church? I want to end with this because it was very personal. When we were organizing the Musda homecoming, I sat down and said, I'm going to work with these young people at Makere. 
we have to make a statement for the SDA church. And I said, what do I have? In my mind, I said, I think I have many friends in high places. So these young people will help in the mobilization. And they said, we, we said we are going to make a statement 50 years such that wherever we go, they talk about it. And we are grateful to God that these young people did their level best. If you got a chance to see, you really saw somebody came after the celebration and they're like, eh, at least now I was proud. She's a lecturer at College of Health Science and says, at least now I'm proud to be an Adventist at Makere University. Because the class and the quality of the function met the standard. We had the vice chancellor attending the function. Previously, we, we hadn't confirmed. But I think with the nature of the visitors coming, he confirmed on, I think, Friday that he's coming. I said, hey, so it is possible to do great things. Aspire for great things. Why? Because God has promised that he will help us to achieve those things. He says these words in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. That now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that you can ask or even imagine. I want to challenge you by the grace of God to aspire for those things. Whatever you see it is hard to do. Aspire because God has said, I'll be with you. I'll be with you till the end of ages. May the good Lord richly bless you. May God bless you abundantly. We want to hear testimonies that when we gathered for the PCM fellowship, this came to pass. God bless you.